Hey folks, welcome back to On The Bench. Today I'm going to tie my Tutti Fruity jig. And this is a pattern I've been using um, all fall around the streams here in BC, up north down here. It's worked great for trout and whitefish. And orange and pink are great colors for fish no matter what. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For hook I'm using an umqua and it's a size 14. 60 degree jig hook with a wide gape. Really, really nice hooks. For bead, I'm using a 1 8 slotted tungsten bead in gold, but you could certainly use a silver or even hot pink. I've been using hot pink with this fly as well. For thread, I'm using two. I'm using 3 aught and 18 aught, and it's fluorescent red by Semperfly, and they're classic waxed. However, you could just use um, a 12 aught or 8 aught if you have it. And just classic red thread is fine. For the rib, I'm using 0.2 millimeter wire and hot pink by Semperfly. For the tail, I'm using Coke de Leon and speckled ginger. The body is Semper Flash, and it's the mere, the medium mirror orange Mirage Flash. And for the collar, I'm using Shocking Pink in the Sparkle Dubbing by Semperfly. So just go ahead and slide your bead onto your hook and place the hook in the vise. And I've got the, the slot at the top of the bead, and I'm going to try it hold it there by building up a little dam in behind. And that's what I'm using the 3 aught thread for. You could use your uh, regular thread to do this. You don't need 3 aught. This just makes it quicker, and I don't have to use as much of my thinner thread. Just build up a little dam so the slot will stay right on top. Go ahead and clip that away. I'm just going to whip finish. Next, take your thinner thread, and you could use um, like 12 aught or 8 aught for this fly. Uh, for sure. And also I've done it in classic wax, so if you don't have the fluorescent red, that's fine. Just start that on the hook. I just don't have 12 odd or 8 odd in this color. And I wanted to use it. Which in itself would make a good hot spot without the dubbing that I'm going to use. It's quite bright. So just go ahead and take your Coke de Leon. You could also use pheasant or um, another substitute. I like Coke de Leon, it's quite strong. And I find my pheasant tail uh, jigs have started to break in my and so I have a bunch of tailless jigs in my box. So I prefer this over anything else. I also use squirrel. Squirrel is nice and strong, but it's a bit slippery, so it's hard to work with sometimes. And I've just got it angled just slightly towards myself. When I bring my loop on top, it's going to hold that right on top. If it's too long, you can just pull it to length. You want it about the length of the body. Bring a couple wraps down and then go underneath your tail just to hold it up nice. And then I'm just going to trim this. And you can flatten your thread, just give it a spin counterclockwise. You want to maintain a nice slim body on these jigs because it helps them fall through the water column a lot quicker. Same as like if you're using four pound tippet as opposed to two pound, two pounds going to go through the water column faster. Same concept applies to a jig or a nymph. Next take your wire. If you don't have hot pink, you could probably use gold or silver, it would work fine. And I've just tucked it right into that slot on top, make a few wraps. Next I'm going to take my flash, tie that in right on top. I've done this fly with uh, just plain Mirage tinsel as well, with the red body, and like a rainbow warrior. 
and it works really nice. I've used both, they both work. Just bring those two materials down together. Right to where you made that last wrap. And then you can bring your thread back up. That's good. Next, you can take a little bit of um, glue or head cement or resin, whatever you have. Maybe not resin, but... You could also put resin or glue on top of the uh, body. I'm just going to put a little dab on there. Mine's getting a little dried out. <laughs> it's got things coming off it there. Just to hold it a little bit stronger. And then just take your body material and wind it up the hook, just slightly overlapping the last wrap. So depending on what color thread you use underneath here, it's going to change colors. Bring it right up to the front and then tie it off. Do a couple wraps in behind, a couple in front, and then go ahead and snip that away. Next, take your rib, and I like to do a couple at the back. I always counterwind my rib, well, most of the time. I like to go in the opposite direction I put my material on the hook. Just bring that up in nice, even spaces. You're probably going to get about five or six wraps. And when you get to the front, I, just, I like to do one complete turn of the wire right at the head. It helps fill in the little gap um, in between the bead and the hook. And it gives it a little weight and just makes it more secure. Go ahead and twist that off. Next, take your dubbing. Um, if you don't have this color of dubbing, I've used just plain old pink ice dub is fine or any kind of pink dubbing. I like this shocking pink color. It's quite bright. And you only need a very, very tiny amount here. You don't need to use wax or anything. It spins onto the thread quite nicely. Makes a nice thin noodle. You just want a tiny little hot spot on here. Like that, and then whip finish. I usually give it two. Um, I'm not going to use my glue because it's drying out, but on the second whip, you um, should maybe apply a little bit to the thread before you put it in there. And there you have it, my tutti fruity jig. So to watch all of our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes, or to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, please head over to our website at www.sfotf.ca. And make sure you check out our Facebook page um, at Sport Fishing on the Fly. Dawn's got an awesome giveaway going on over there with an Islander reel and a scientific angler line and stuff. Thanks for joining me on this edition of On the Bench, everyone. As always, take care, conserve the waters, and tight lines.